Hi, everybody. I'm Ann Litt from KCRW, and it is my pleasure to introduce and welcome to the stage Arlo Parks. Got me falling on myself, but a door inside you. Shaking it off, toes, glitter in my bones. Love you like I don't know better. Girl, I wanna protect you. I do. Oh, your touch embroiders me. we met was in my backyard. Indeed. <laughs> it, it was. It was. So for those of you who don't know, Arlo actually has the, I don't know if it's the dubious distinction or the wonderful honor of being the first artist to ever appear live from my backyard, which we started during COVID because we couldn't get into the studio. And you were so generous to come in. Of course. Well, straight off the Mercury Prize win that you had had. And at the time, as I recall, you mentioned that it was your first time in Los Angeles. Yeah, it was. Um, I do actually live here now, but, you know, the first few sessions that I had surrounding my record were in L.A. And I was kind of exploring the city a little bit and getting to know it. So that was a wonderful moment to have on my first trip. So a question for you. One of my takeaways from Collapsed in Sunbeams was the intimacy and the you whispering in my ear and you taking me on your uh, 
really you taking me personally, and, and I, I, I can say we, but I mean me because it felt that personal to me. Do you feel a continuation or a difference into your new era with the new album? I think I do feel a difference. I think the main one for me is that Collapse in Sunbeams kind of surrounded the experience of characters and people in my life. And this record feels a lot more about me personally, which is a little bit, yeah, it's a little bit more scary, but also a lot more rewarding. I think well, it takes, yeah. Well, what's interesting is that you would think that that would feel like the more um, whispering in your ear mm. album. And to me, this feels a little edgier, like yeah. a little more kind of in your face and saying, you know what, I feel fucking love the Deftones and I'm going to put them in a song or whatever. Yeah. yeah. No, there was that sense of courage to it. And I felt like I was working off a blank slate. I felt like, as you say, I could pull in the Deftones and My Bloody Valentine and Apex Twin and Boards of Canada and just really like show who I was um, as a musician and who I love to listen to. Because at the heart of it, I just love music. And I wanted to show that a little bit more with this record.
Purple Phase. Can you tell everyone how the album came to get the title it has? Yeah, um, so it came at the very end of the process uh, and it was pulled from a film called The Souvenir by Joanna Hogg and it's this A24 film. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love that movie too. Um, and it was talking about the reason why we watch films and create art and it was about not seeing reality as it's played out but reality as it's experienced in this soft machine through my body, through my eyes. And I felt like that really captured what I wanted to do with this record. It was about how I process things, the specific way in which I remember things and see things and feel things and the world through my eyes. Um, and I think that kind of captured the shift between the first record and the second as well, because it was like, okay, this is me as an observer from afar, and then this is me in it, feeling it. Oh, okay, that actually really makes sense. Um, I mentioned before I had the privilege to see Arlo last night at the Belasco, and revisiting the characters, Eugene, and the, the characters from your album, I, I see what you mean, that they're characters, and now you're sort of fully in here, mm, right? Exactly, exactly. I feel very in my body, and I think there's something kind of terrifying about that, but also super rewarding. Okay, here's a question for you. Um, solitude versus companionship. Mm. The song Impurities um, seems to have a theme about solitude, but also a theme about companionship. Mm. And I would love for you to talk about the song and what those two mean to you. Yeah, I think for me, I mean, the album in general has a lot of these contrasts, like the light and the shade, the fact that, especially in impurities, it's like I can really appreciate companionship and feeling understood by people and feeling joyful and feeling energized because there were moments where I didn't feel like that at all. And I think that that song kind of represents how just one small action or one evening or one conversation with a person can just fill you up and make you feel like you're shining. And after a long time of maybe feeling quite numb to things and quite dull, it's like having somebody who inspires you um, and helps you see the world in like um, a more positive way. Mm. It's a beautiful video and it really, um, what you just described about it filling you up mm -hmm. and then you can take it away and be alone. Exactly. It's that contrast between, you know, being surrounded by family, being at the table, being very much involved in a community and then kind of withdrawing and feeling that oscillation between also between introversion and extroversion and how we kind of oscillate between the two in different ways. Which are you? I don't really know. Like, I think I, I guess I'm kind of like a ambivert, I think yeah, they call yeah, it. Yeah. Um, I think over the time I've become a lot more introvert um, just in terms of how I recharge. Like I think I definitely recharge by being alone because I spend a lot of time kind of being quite perceived and like having people around me. So I just want to be like with my dog, just yeah. cozy. <laughs> Physical 
played in the backyard, you were wearing a Daniel Johnston t-shirt. Mm. And that kind of hit all of us to our core because Daniel's, when he was with us, he played at KCRW. Mm. Um, if you could name a couple of influences that have been so meaningful to you, it, it could be in your life, but, but maybe specifically in the making of this album, are there a couple of bands you've listened to? Definitely. I mean, there were so many. I was completely a sponge during that period of time. Um, but when I think about lyrically, my two favorites that I always go to are Nick Drake and Elliot Smith. Um, Pink Moon is like one of my favorite records of all time. And there's this sense of like, especially when you learn about his life and, and who he was as a person, there's like that deep melancholy, but also this real sense of like warmth and his voice is just like glistening. And, and I love I love Nick Drake. Um, and then I was listening to stuff that felt kind of nostalgic to me, listening to a lot of Radiohead and Smashing Pumpkins and um, My Bloody Valentine and, you know, music that I loved when I was 15 and I always dreamt of, like, just thrashing guitar in front of a crowd. Um, and I think also, you know, I listen to a lot of ambient music and a lot of electronic music. Um, and I think that that actually formed a lot of the inspiration for the record because I was reading a lot of poetry, especially by like Mary Oliver and thinking about nature and thinking about spending more time in nature. Um, and ambient music was always kind of what soundtrack those long walks like through the woods or on the beach or going up to Big Bear. And like, I feel like ambient music kind of formed the foundation of what allowed me to think whilst I was making this record. So, yeah. <laughs>
much everyone